it's Jenny from Southern Savers. It's our Monday night Q&A, which is your chance to ask any questions that you have, saving money, couponing, budgeting. The sky's really the limit, guys, whatever has been on your brain about all this. But I always come with a topic, too. So this week, I decided we would talk stockpiling, um, which I know for some people is kind of a dreaded word. Um, you have this idea of something that you saw on TV, which is really called hoarding. Uh, and you have a hard time getting past that in terms of grocery shopping and saving money. And that is not what we're talking about tonight. Nothing couponing should be related to hoarding. Just to kind of have us all on the same picture, when I tell you that we need to have a stockpile, I really mean that you need to have enough to last you until it's not on or until it's back on sale to get you through um, that's that sale cycle. So that's the concept of a stockpile. It is not a bomb shelter. It is not, you know, no longer parking in your garage. That may be bordering on hoarding. You know, you can label it yourself. Um, but that's what we're going to talk about as our topic tonight. In terms of how questions work, though, please ask anything that's on your brain. I am completely cool with off-topic questions. So um, whatever your questions are, we can go there. Even if it's on specific deals, whatever, I'm fine with that. I actually kind of love the fact that sometimes it's just stump Jenny mode. Um, so don't feel like you need to keep your questions specifically on stockpiling or the concept there. But that's the big thing that we were going to hit on. So um, just, you know, to tell you, uh, I guess in a sense, it's almost the elephant in the room for couponers. Because when we start to get that um, stereotype of what you think a couponer is, I get a lot of people that will tell me like, oh, I don't really want to do that. I don't, I don't need to go to that level. Like, but that's not what we're talking about, people. Uh, we're talking about making sure that we have enough to get us through the sale. So um, that's what I want to want you to get a feel for too is not necessarily um, getting a ton. So Jennifer, have, you have a great question. Why do some people, including other coupon bloggers, you know, have enough for three to six months? Um, I That is a great question. I wish I could understand why people felt the need to. And I think, Jennifer, it really is not being able to say that you have enough of a deal. I've been behind people in Publix that have had, um, you know, 40 bottles of mustard in their cart. And you're thinking, that's enough mustard to last you possibly 40 years. I mean, how many bottles of mustard do you use in a year? Because for me, it might be two. It's like a little squirt in deviled eggs this week and a little squirt in some uh, mac and cheese. It's our, it's our hidden ingredient in mac and cheese. Um, but we are using this all the time to need 40 bottles. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely something missing that's making some folks go overboard on this. I think that part of it is that it's free and you just, you can't stop yourself on grabbing it. You know what guys, this will be on sale again. So if that's what you need to chant to yourself, do it. It is not the last mustard sale that we will ever see in the grocery store. So just hold yourself back a little bit and let's get enough to last you six weeks, which honestly is like a bottle. Uh, and I'm probably overstocked in the mustard category. I don't know why, If I hope that someone else's fridge is like this, but we probably have at least three open bottles of mustard in our fridge for some reason right now, uh, because everybody just gets a new one out. But we also have a couple in the pantry. So we're good for five years on mustard. Uh, and maybe I'm, you know, a bad example on that one, but I, I you know, yes. Everyone can have some off moments, but we really do need to be just getting enough for six weeks. So um, let's go there in terms of what I mean by that and why you want to do that too. Uh, and Barbara, I'm going to copy paper. There is a deal before we jump into the topic that um, we just posted it today on the site, actually, Barbara. So I'll have my husband stick in a link in the comments for you. Um, but there is a deal at Office Depot this week on a whole case of copy paper that comes out super cheap. Okay, so to jump into the, the sale cycle concept. Kit's saying, is it normally six weeks? That's what we need to get the point across. So when something comes on sale, uh, and what I mean by a sale is that it is 40% off or more. So kind of just, 
no, tattoo that number in your brain, 40% off or more, meaning, um, like for example, this week, um, Barilla Pasta is BOGO at Publix right now. This, it's 50% off, it's buy one, get one. This is a great week to grab it. And we had a coupon, it came out in Sunday's paper, Sunday a week ago, we also got a printable that came out Sunday a week ago. It's a great time to grab it because now we're down to basically less than like 40 cents a box with the BOGO and the coupon. Sometimes we'll get pasta cheaper than that. And that's probably where some people go overboard because they're thinking it's free, I need to grab 40 boxes of it. It's gonna get bugs in it before you can eat all of that pasta, guys. So let's stick on that sale cycle. So I see that it's on sale. I see that it's BOGO. I see that I have a coupon. The key part to that is that I need to remember that it will be on sale again in six weeks, like clockwork. I mean, y'all could set alarms for this, like a little pasta alarm in your phone. Remind me, Siri, in six weeks. I shouldn't say that. She will automatically do this in the middle of the live video. Um, but you get the idea. So you could do that. Every six weeks, it's gonna be back on sale. So if I grab enough to last me six weeks, I'm good. I will never have a moment where we, oh, we have no pasta in the house. No, we're good. And then it's gonna come back on sale and it's time to go ahead and grab some more. That's the concept of what we're doing because if I don't do that, cereal is a great example of this, guys. If you go in and you grab one box of cereal to last you in my house, that will last like three days, um, but you grab a box of cereal, it's gonna last you a week. Well, come a week from now, your cereal is not on sale anymore and you're gonna pay full price for that cereal or you're gonna buy a different brand that is on sale. But the idea here is that I buy it when it's on sale so that I don't ever have to pay full price because this box of cereal full price, is, it's like four bucks, 450 for some brands. I can't do that. I'm stopping people in the store. So if you ever see me in a store and you put full price cereal in your buggy, I am like having to bite my tongue to not be like, please don't buy that. It is not on sale today. Um, little old people, I've done it uh, once or twice. They just look at me like I have four heads because uh, I tend to always be in there on senior day. But I'll even stop and be like, you know what? That is BOGO at Bilo. You should really just not buy that here at Publix, but go to a different store. I know they're not going to do it. So I learned a few years ago to just bite my tongue and not say anything. But the goal is to buy it when it's on sale and buy enough of it to get you through so that I'm not paying $4.50 for this box of cereal. I'm paying a buck. I don't ever wanna pay more than a certain price, and so it's kinda of learning your price. For me, cereal should always be a buck. So this was BOGO this week at Bilo, and we had dollar off two coupons that were in the paper. So after the coupon and after the BOGO sale, super good price. Um, it is one of my children's absolute favorite cereals. So when I get to bring this home, I get to feel like a really good mom. It's not on sale very often, and we tend to rotate through cereals. So, you know, I may not buy six weeks worth of oatmeal squares. Uh, I'm gonna grab whatever's on sale and just kind of keep us stocked on the cereal side of things, but that's the idea. So I get enough to last six weeks so that I never have that crisis pay full price. Um, so we're looking for that 40% off or more sale, which in reality, guys, is really having, um, <clears throat> yeah, in reality is really having, um, a focus on BOGO items, looking for the best price that we possibly can on the items that we need. Now, um, I'm going back to comments and Laura, your comment just made me laugh in the middle of all that. Um, so yes, we go overboard on other things too. So talk personal care for a second because Laura says, you know, what about my body wash that's fallen out of the cabinet? I shared that with you guys on a, a live last week. Um, personal care for us is that crazy. So uh, the last time we did this, my husband brought in our oral care drawer. I don't even know if I can pick it up, but I'm going to try. So I'm gonna disappear for a second. Oh, it's heavy. Um, so let's see. This is the drawer from our bathroom. I call it the oral care drawer because anything in that realm gets thrown in. And actually guys, before I even uh, hiked it up, I grabbed seven tubes of toothpaste because I couldn't get the drawer out myself. My husband had to get it out. So I was gonna go um, with just the tubes of toothpaste that I could grab. So, um, you know, there is a point where you have enough. You have enough of every single thing imaginable uh, and we're probably there. This is enough toothpaste to last my family quite a while. No, it is not beautifully organized, but in a sense it is. It has its own little drawer, right? Everything oral care, except I see a Gillette razor that got thrown in there, um, and it just doesn't belong. But you get the idea. Oh, I gotta put that down, it's heavy. So um, when it comes to personal care, let's talk just specifically personal care, because when we're drugstore shopping, 
It does not follow a six-week cycle. And that is a big question that I get a lot when we talk sales cycles and stocking up, is how do we stock up drugstore-wise? So we're gonna see free toothpaste in the drugstores almost every single week. And there's gonna be a point where you're gonna say, uh, we have enough, we don't need any more. So maybe at that point you decide that you're gonna start to coupon and donate, which you can totally do. And while I show you that crazy hard to hold oral care drawer for us, um, I tend to clean that out uh, at least once a year, if not more, just donating a good half, if not more, of what's in there to um, local, you can give it to the food bank, you can give it to uh, Ronald McDonald House is where we're sending a lot of our stuff right now. Uh, I used to put all of this in Operation Christmas Child boxes and when they decided no toothpaste, that was a really sad day for me because it's a free item, uh, but no more toothpaste in OCC boxes. So when it comes to personal care, what I would recommend is that you get in the habit of buying it when you see it, if you'll use it. Um, but for me, once you're stocked, which is where we are, you're looking at that massive drawer of toothpaste and you're thinking, no, you're telling me not to hoard and you're a toothpaste hoarder. I'm not, I promise. Um, what I would recommend once you reach our status is that you really just shop once a month. So I shared with you guys our CVS trip last week. I probably won't go back to CVS for a month. I don't need to. I'm completely stocked in everything personal care. I'm really only shopping once a month in CVS now to keep my extra care bucks current because they expire every 30 days. So I need to be back in there once a month, but I don't need to be in there every single week. And that can also be a defining moment between saving money and couponing and hoarding because at some point you're gonna realize, you know what, I am having a hard time staying out of a store. That might be a question moment for you. If you don't need it and you're not gonna need it for six months, then why are you going? Now I'm going because I don't wanna throw away $20 in extra care bucks, it's 20 free bucks. Let's not throw that away. Uh, let's go once a month, but let's plan on donating or whatever you might end up doing with some of it. There will be a point when you're completely stocked and that's awesome. Let's stay stocked, um, but let's not go overboard either. Um, so let me jump back into the questions. Um, that's awesome. So Stacy's saying, you know, I started couponing about midway in January and I'm starting to see the repeat sales now. So that's awesome, Stacy. I'm glad that you can kind of see how it, 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 it really does work. They really do come back on sale. I'm not lying to you. Um, now before some of you say that I'm lying, there are some exceptions to a six week rule and we always try to hit on these. Um, one of those being anything holiday related. So you're not going to see spiral cut ham on sale. You're not going to see, um, you know, all of our Easter things, they're on sale at Easter. We're not gonna see, oh goodness, turkey. You, you can think of all those things. They follow their own sales cycle around their holiday seasons, but not outside of them. Um, one of those, and this one catches a lot of people, is baking items. So if you love to bake from scratch, we see flour and yeast and all of those items on sale around holidays and then never outside of those holiday buckets. So. Um, you've got to kind of stock up a little longer than six weeks if you're a really big baker. Um, sugar is an exception to that, don't panic. Sugar's on sale all the time, especially in the South, because we love our sweet tea and um, it's not considered a baking item specifically uh, in our neck of the woods anyway. So we're all good in the sugar category. But for other baking items, you're going to want to get almost to that 12 week window, especially for that stretch between Easter and Thanksgiving. It's a really long stretch. We're gonna get a tiny little bubble on baking items around July 4th, but it's super tiny. And then um, they'll be back on sale come Thanksgiving. So you gotta make it, especially this year, because Easter's so early at being the first week in April. Um, but yeah, those are the big ones. Uh, one other exception on um, stocking up for six weeks is temperature specific. And I meant to grab a can of soup, but I didn't. Um, soup does not follow a six week cycle during the summer. So in the summer, in the South, it's you know 102, you're not wanting soup and they don't put it on sale. So don't look for soup after mid-April all the way until September 1. The first full week in September, you're gonna open up your, your weekly ad and it's gonna be all soup, but you're gonna have a long stretch. So if you eat soup for lunch every day at work, 
Uh, you want to stock up. You're going to want a bomb shelter of soup to make it through, but nothing else, guys. There's no other item in the store that has that long of a stretch other than baking items and soup that it's going to be a really a hard press one for you. Um, let's see. So Paula, uh, Paula's got a question on CVS. Uh, the CVS percent coupon changes. It's taking the percent off after giving the cashier your extra care back. So Paula, there were folks talking about that Wednesday when I did the Facebook Live. Um, and I, I think what we're seeing is it's different based on how it rings up. But yes, extra care bucks are playing a factor in that and our store coupons, manufacturer's coupons are not, which is what one person was asking uh, on the Facebook Live. So I reached out to CVS Corporate to get their final answer on it, and I'm still waiting for them to send me the tailored uh, final answer. But they did send me a preliminary, this is what uh, the system should be doing, and that is after extra care bucks, after store CRT coupons, which are the ones that print out in the store um, and uh that's it. It shouldn't be factoring in the manufacturer's coupon. So we'll see what the final um, tailored answer is from corporate, though, uh, whenever they send it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so Jessica says, I haven't bought laundry soap in two years, and I still have a shelf full. Uh, there can definitely be moments that we go uh, a little a little overboard on items, maybe in your category, or you just found a super good deal you couldn't pass up. Uh, I still buy laundry detergent, Jessica, but I don't ever need it. Uh, laundry detergent is one item for me that having five kids, I feel like if I do stop buying it, we're going to have a crisis moment. But it has taken over the top of the washing machine and one full drawer under the washing machine. So we could probably take quite a number of months off too, um, but it scares me to take months off of laundry detergent. Um, Yes. And so Jennifer commented, and I agree. So she says it's easier on the budget to stock up only for six weeks as well. Exactly, guys. So if you're going in and you're trying to buy, you know, 400 cans, even if these cans are 20 cents a piece and you're trying to buy a buggy full, that adds up. Um, so I highly recommend if you're trying to coupon to save money, that's the reason that most of us get started, that you set a budget and you set a budget in your head that no matter where the deals are, we're cutting ourselves off at this point. So our family, our budget that we're trying to stick under is roughly around 70 bucks a week is the goal. That's a tight goal for seven people, but that also means that there's a point where we're not gonna add any more cans to the buggy or we're not gonna add any more items because there's not any more money um, in that budget. So I highly recommend that you coupon with a budget because couponing without a budget can get very excessive. It can, I, I've had people that actually have emailed and said, hey Jenny, I'm buying tons of stuff. My buggy's full, I'm getting so many groceries, but I'm spending as much as I always did before couponing. That's the first thing that I'm gonna ask. Well, where's the point that you're cutting yourself off? I'm glad that you're getting a ton of items, but at what point are you gonna say, okay, we're, you know, budget's done. Yes, the mustard is 20 cents a bottle, but we're not gonna add any more mustard in. Uh, and you have to have that point, guys. There has to be a cutoff. So I'm not saying that um, you have to make it a tight budget. You know, if you can't do $70 a week, that's fine. We're all different. Um, but I would encourage you to still set one. And if the next question that I always get whenever I go there is, okay, well, we're a family of four. What should a budget look like for us? Um, I will tell you that if I were to take a month off from couponing, and I did this, guys. I didn't coupon very much at all in December. It's a crazy month for me just trying to keep up with all of the Christmas deals that we're posting, and I'm working crazy long hours, so I didn't coupon. And then we sat down and we looked at the budget at the end of December and the amount that I spent on groceries, which was astronomical compared to what I normally spend on groceries. Uh, I, it still, it almost makes me cry that I did that. But we just, we have moments where we just tune out. It's over and I can't, I can't focus on it anymore. Um, so we hit the ground running in January as hard as we could to, you know, get back on track. But that's the point is that you need to look at what you were spending and then what I would do if you're just getting started and you're trying to set what that budget's going to look like, if we were spending, um, let's say, $150 a week, which sounds excessive, but is actually kind of normal for a lot of families that are not focused on saving. You're just shopping. Just give me the groceries and let me go home. 
150 a week is what you were doing. Let's try to bump it to 100. Let's not go completely in half yet because that's just scary mode for some of you, but let's bump it to 100 and then let's see how much lower we can get it from there, especially if you're just getting started. Don't set yourself up for failure. Uh, you know, set yourself up for success, but let's try to knock out $50, which is basically a third of your grocery budget um, as you get started or what you were spending to now you're under a budget. And then let's work towards a half if you can. Um, I wouldn't set that out per person. I would just focus on what you were spending to what you are gonna spend now um, versus trying to set some crazy number that you're gonna try to live by and then you're gonna fail because you've not ever done this before. Um, you know, it's like dieting. Let's not all decide to lose 10 pounds in a week. You can't, you can't do that. So um, let's just make some realistic steps to get started. Um, so Jake asks in particular, um, how many items do I get when I'm stocking up? So I don't, I would say, Jake, it's not always a specific number. It really depends on the item. Um, uh, and canned goods is probably a, a good exception, a good example of where we might go crazy. I'm trying to get enough for six weeks. Um, the Del Monte, for example, was a super good deal, what, maybe three weeks ago. Uh, and canned goods came out to being around 25 cents a can, pairing in store coupons and um, competitor coupons, heading to buy low with these. Uh, and Publix had a good deal on them too. But in that situation, I might end up buying 25 to 30 cans that's still not gonna get us through six weeks. It's what I could get this week um, with the sale and with the coupons. I don't ever try to clear a shelf either, Jake. I try to leave some for some other people, um, but it's gonna totally be a different amount per item. I, you know, I'm not gonna buy 25 boxes of cereal. Uh, it's just, it's depending on the item specifically. You know, to go back to our mustard example, one. Uh, and then I'm good for the next six months. I'm not gonna put mustard back on the list unless mustard made me money. Um, so let's go there for that rare exception since it's a good, a good point to bring in. This is not a current example, but there are moments where, yes, I don't need this. I'm not gonna need it for a long time. But if I see on the Southern Saver shopping list or I figured out myself that if I bought a, a bottle of mustard, I'm gonna make 50 cents to buy that. Um, so an example of how that would work, it's buy one, get one and you have a coupon that's gonna double, you're in a store that doubles, or I've got a competitor coupon and a manufacturer's coupon, and in the end, this bottle of mustard costs 70 cents, and I've got a $1.20 in coupons. So literally in the store, I'm making 50 cents to buy this. That 50 cents, while the store could put 50 cents in your hand, I wouldn't ever encourage you to do that because that cashier will never forget who you are. She will be very sure that you just broke every rule in the world. Um, so don't do not do that. Don't be like, hey, where's my 50 cents? Uh, instead, think of it as I bought a bottle of mustard and I got 50 cents off my milk or off my produce or off my meat. So in that situation, there are going to be times when, no, I don't need it but I'm completely making money to buy it. And, and mustard's a, a rare example for that. One that pops in a ton, especially for my Publix shoppers, is vitamins. Publix loves to put out in their green or their purple flyers, $6 off two um, Nature Bounty, Sundown, Nature Made vitamins. We've got manufacturer's coupons for those vitamins. We've got that huge six off two coupon, and then they put them on sale. So when we do that, you're gonna end up making money to buy melatonin, vitamin B, vitamin D. Those are the cheaper ones that they sell. Uh, donate them if you don't need them, but they're paying you to buy them you should buy them. Uh, in workshops, I've I've said it n so many times, I can't even count, but if you're going into CVS and CVS is gonna pay you to buy shampoo, so this past week I made money to buy L'Oreal shampoo, I don't care if you're bald, buy the shampoo and donate it. You just got paid money to buy it. So there are gonna be moments when you're completely stocked and we're still gonna add it to the buggy, but we're not gonna add 10, we're just gonna add one or two, and we're gonna make that money. Um, so just to kind of give you some exceptions to our stocking up rule, let's donate it, let's send it on somewhere else if you don't need it because lots of people can use it, especially guys when we're talking personal care, um, because just a little plug there, no, uh, no 
government program supplies personal care. So I can't use WIC here. I can't use food stamps here. Uh, these are things that are needed and it's a great thing for you to donate. So send them to the food bank. They can still put them in the right hands. Every time I go to our local food bank and get a tour in the back or um, just pop in to even donate things, it breaks my heart because they have this huge cart of baskets and the baskets are all labeled by size for diapers, size one, size two, size threes. And guys, there may be like 10 diapers in one basket and all the rest are empty. And to know all the mamas that are coming in that need diapers, but they don't have any to give. Um, it, it, it's incredibly sad. So personal care is a huge thing that you could be passing off. Now, diapers are not something we get paid to buy very often. And I know it's a hard one to donate, but so many other things we do, that's a great thing for you to kind of put your couponing um, to good and to really pass off onto other folks in great ways. Um, so to jump back in on questions, um, let me pull up YouTube too. I don't want to miss you guys either. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So it, it's um, it, one person said it's so easy to get to the point where in your pantry, all you're doing is just kind of topping off what you're missing. And that's where I want you guys to get. That's my goal in the end. So if you're just getting started, and this is week one for you, um, you're going to go in today, you're going to look at the list that's on Southern Savers or pull out your weekly ad, and our goal today as week one uh, is to buy six weeks worth of what's on sale and one week worth of what you have to have, just one week to, of the things that are not on sale. And next week, six weeks worth of what's on sale and one week worth of what you have to have. And your have to have section is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller until just like the uh, the folks on YouTube were saying, until you're completely stocked. And at that point, which is usually about six weeks in, I'm gonna to start to look at that Publix Weekly ad or that Bilo ad list on Southern Savers because those are my stores. I'm gonna say, you know what? I don't need of these 60 BOGO items, I need maybe seven or eight of them to stay stocked. So I'm gonna grab those things that I need and that's it. So these trips are not gonna be very huge. And I get a lot of folks when they're first getting started on grocery shopping, uh, couponing style anyway, and you're thinking, you know what, I've always been paycheck to paycheck, and you're telling me you want me to walk in and buy six weeks worth of every single item, I can't do that and make it paycheck to paycheck already. We're already tight. So guys, we're buying six weeks worth of what's on sale with a coupon. So these guys, they were free at Bilo. Six weeks worth of free canned beans isn't very painful. You get the idea here. So we're buying it when it's on sale at its lowest possible point and stocking up on it for six weeks. It will come back on sale, I promise. Um, but that's the gist. So um, if you are kind of in the back of your mind thinking, there is no way that I could get six weeks worth of food and still be able to pay the electricity bill, don't panic. Don't let that scare you. Um, and then once you're stocked, Staying stocked costs even less because I'm just getting the few things that we need. Um, just like um, here today is saying on the YouTube side, just getting the things to stay stocked to kind of top off the pantry. I, li I like that word that you used for that. Um, so uh, Leah's asking, you know, I'm new to this. Can I use more than one coupon on an item? So let's go back to our free beans, Leah. And this deal it was it was a week and a half ago now, so don't go running out to Bilo. Um, but Bilo had Lux beans on sale and Winn-Dixie too for my Florida folks, uh, on sale for 50 cents a can. And we had a coupon for a dollar off two. So that coupon is good for two cans, uh, meaning I gotta buy two cans to use it. But if I wanted to buy four cans, I can use two coupons. Um, so we're allowed to print two of every coupon that's there or most coupons that are there per computer. So the Lux coupon is actually sweet because it, it'll it was letting people print more than two uh, and it didn't care if it was multiple computers. So I printed two from uh, my computer and two from my husband's computer. You could kind of go to town. Um, but one coupon on that one, it depends on the wording on the coupon, Leah, but in that situation, it's a dollar off two cans. So I'm gonna buy two cans and I'm gonna use that one coupon. Or if I wanna buy four cans, I'm gonna use two coupons. You get the idea. Um, to go back to our pasta example, that's this week at Publix, they are BOGO. 
and I have a dollar off two coupon from the Sunday paper from a week back, or if you printed one, um, then I'm going to buy two boxes, um, or sorry, it was a dollar of four, wasn't it? Um, I'm going to buy four boxes to use that one dollar coupon, uh, or I could buy eight boxes if I wanted to go super crazy and use two coupons, just to kind of give you the math on that. But we're going to see all different values. So if I've got a coupon for a dollar off one, and you want to buy two of them, use two. Um, but normally, that's going to kind of give you the gist of, of what you're trying to follow. So Jamie's got a great question. I get this one a lot, Jamie. So I'm telling you, we, we are shopping on about $70 a week. So what meals do we fix? So let's see if off the top of my head, I can remember everything that we ate in the last week. Um, we do a lot of chicken and a lot of ground beef meals. Um, and keep in mind that our meat is coming from Zacon. So our meat does not come from the grocery store, but we buy our meat in bulk um, from Zacon or from our local uh, U.S. Foods Chef store, which is like a restaurant supply store. So if you have a restaurant supply store, you should see if you can shop there because the prices are super crazy good on meat. But um, we did shepherd's pie. Um, we'll do chicken pot pie. We will do Lipton onion soup burgers, which is kind of like my rendition of... Um, Oh, words are gone now. Um, well, basically make patties with Lipton and soup mix and um, an egg. I can't even think of what the normal thing is called, but meatloaf, there we go. Um, but we make them into patties. So we'll do that and rice and a veggie. We're very simple meals, Jamie, because I've got five kids, but they range in age. So getting something that a two-year-old's happy with is very different from what a 12-year-old's happy with. My 12-year-olds would love some spice and my two-year-olds will tell you that spaghetti sauce is spicy. Um, so kind of basic on that side, but a lot of rice, a lot of potatoes. Uh, keep in mind our produce comes from the produce co-op as well. I didn't share a picture of it this week because I didn't want folks to get tired of every other Saturday me sharing what we grab, but um, that is all kind of factored into that $70 round two that we're trying to make everything fit. Uh, but usually it's a meat, a starch, and a veggie. Just very basic. I'm not, you know, hauling out a cookbook every week and finding things that call for capers and crazy ingredients because I got to go buy those ingredients and those can get expensive. Um, we're going to plan off of our pantry. So I, I will sit down and meal plan. I can show you that because I have my purse here. Uh, I carry it around with me. So whenever I get some moments, um, <clears throat> this was a little fun kind of splurge for me. But this is my meal plan book. Um, and Facebook, guys, I uh, now that I know how to do this, I always forget to turn the screen around so that it's not backwards for you guys. Um, so there we go. Um, but now, now you can actually read that it says yum. So this is our meal plan book. Um, this is probably the easiest way to show you, Jenny. But um, I don't meal plan out uh, lunches. I just meal plan out dinners so you can kind of see what the plan is. Uh, and I've shared this with y'all so many times, but Sunday night, every Sunday night, it's Chinese night. We don't ever differ. Um, so kind of going down the list, you can see what we've grabbed. Let me make sure that I have this. Oh, YouTube guys are looking at the wrong page. It's so hard to get this to work on both screens. Um, but there's our Lipton onion soup burgers that I was just mentioning. Um, six bean soup. It's just literally a bag of the bean mix uh, soup that you can grab. Um, but you get an idea, crock pot barbecue, french fries and corn. We've seen so many great deals on those Idaho, made in Idaho potatoes recently. Um, so working in a lot of those. So I don't know if that helps. Sometimes when I'm also doing this, like we already had a pot pie made, I'll give myself a little note that it's already in the freezer. Um, but that's the gist of it um, as we go through. And sometimes we, um, you know, skip a day or we will write in, uh, that we're going to do a picnic lunch at Classical for lunch, another pot pie that was in the freezer, salmon. Um, but there you go. I don't know if that helps, Jamie. You're literally looking at, at our whole week. We had somebody's birthday right there, so that was a, a favorite meal that we were going to turn out. Um, but hopefully that helps give you an idea of what we're eating for our um, our 70 bucks. So a little in-depth look at, at menu planning. Um, and let's see. Uh, oh, um, yeah, and Chinese food's on sale this week. It, even better. Um, let's see, trying to catch up. Oh, so the produce co-op, Shay, I can put a link into it, but it's here in Columbia, and it's just something of a group of folks that, that they've started um, where you can buy, we kind of bulk buy and then split up that produce, and we meet um, every first and third Saturday. So Laura says, when I'm factoring in meat and produce, 
Is that part of where I say that we spend $70 a week on groceries? Laura, I would say um, produce, probably not. So produce ends up coming out of PayPal because I pay through Facebook. And I don't always end up, that doesn't always end up feeding into um, our budgeting app. So I would say produce does end up a little bit on the side and not counting in uh, as much as it probably should. Um, meat does. So meat becomes, um, I would get into the habit where you're buying one meat a month. So this month, maybe chicken month. Next month, maybe ground beef. You get the idea. And that chicken is a 40 pound box of chicken. It's going to last you three months. So I'm not going to need chicken again for a while. Next month, I'm going to buy 40 pounds of ground beef. You get the idea. So that every month we're buying one meat and that's going to help a lot too in terms of trying to get the budget um, under control. Definitely. <clears throat> um, let's see. So Paula says, I have really got a seriously coupon and stockpile and food items. Any advice should I make a list first or shop sale? So Paula, I love the question because this is where I want folks to realize that when we make a list, um, when and, and this is what I'm assuming that you mean, if I sit down and I make a list of what I'm out of, and this is where, oh, sorry guys, I almost knocked Facebook over. So just to show you what I don't use in this book. Um, so it has a huge shopping list. Look at how much I filled out on my little shopping list. That's all I needed that week. Um, because if I'm shopping based on making a list of what I'm out of, then I'm really what I'm doing is making a list of everything that's not on sale today. And the odds of it ending up on my shopping list and it being on sale are really slim. That's just not the way that we wanna shop. When you shop based on a list, you're really a need-based shopper. And our goal is to be a sale-based shopper. So you have to change. So no more lists. So I could like make this my personal note section if I wanted to, but it's definitely not a shopping list. Okay, I got two things there. Uh, and I did manage to find Burritos BOGO at one store and we ended up ditching the corn on the cob and not grabbing it in the store because I was not happy with the price. Um, but that's our, our goal. So don't start with a list, Paula, really. What I would focus on is focusing on what's on sale this week. Let's buy six weeks worth of what's on sale and let's buy one week worth of what I have to have. So if you can menu plan off of what's on sale, even better so that I don't have to have quite as much. Uh, and let's take that bare bones minimum if you can when you're first getting started. Next week, six weeks worth of what's on sale so that we're building our stockpile based on sales uh, and not necessarily based on the list. Now, if you need something, um, this is one of the, the features of Southern Savers if you've not already used it, but we have an item search and I can have my husband, uh, he, he handles all the comments and all the links while I'm talking. I'm not so good at that multitasking part, um, but we'll stick a link into the item search and that is where you could actually search for a specific item right now in the store. I need it, tell me where it's the best price. It's gonna show you every sale that's running this week on that item. So you could use the item search to help you find a specific item if you need that to get you through until the next sale. And little inside tip on that item search, guys, you can actually use it as a historic price book as well. So I can pop back and um, let's see, YouTube folks, if I can um, get you guys to see it. Um, so I try to make it where you can see my screen. For some reason, it's not up. But um, here we go. Um, so we can go in and uh, on the item search, I can I've got uh, I can come in and say um, when was it last on sale. So I can come and put in a date from the past, um, and I can see when the last time something that I desperately wanted was on sale. So. Um, I was actually looking earlier today um, to show you, um, let's do one that you, hmm, trying to think, let's go Tide. Everyone always wants to know when Tide's on sale. Um, but we can even, this. we just added the ability to search specifically by store here. Um, so we could say, show me where, when Tide was on sale at Publix. We can put in a date from January and it's going to show me every sale on Tide since January 1. Um, all in the same place. So I can get an idea of what a good price for Tide is at Publix um, by pairing all those together. So if you've not used the item search, 
as your own price book. It's a great way to do that. Putting in a date in the past, um, picking one store or pick all of them, um, whatever makes you happy, but that way you can sort it just by store if you want. And that is, we just added that just a few weeks ago, the ability to just look at specific stores. You do not have to do that, by the way, guys. Um, so if you don't check any, you can actually select in your profile on Southern Savers just the stores um, that you want to see and your profile will feed off of that. So for me, I have all 36 selected because I need to know where all the stores are, but you don't. So in your profile, you could actually just select the stores that you shop at specifically and then the item search is just going to return your deal. So make sure you've done that as well. But use the item search to help you spot a deal going on for something I need right now and use the item search to help you spot historical prices, definitely. Um, so uh, let's see, to pop back out, um, um, oh, I'm glad that you guys are loving all the videos. So on the Facebook side, YouTube guys, you, you guys don't always get it, but I've been popping in and trying to do a lot more uh, Facebook Lives, sharing what we're getting in stores and deals that we're finding. So I'm glad that y'all find that helpful um, and not like, why is this person always on Facebook? Um, let's see, totally off, uh, what's on my hand? Is that bothering you? Um, so Anna, um, I am a leader for a girl's troop, uh, and every Monday night we have, or every other Monday night we have troop meetings, and one of the girls, um, drew on some piece of paper and then handed it to me tonight, and I tried to wash it off, but it won't come off, so that is, that is just like, it's like my mom tattoo for the night, I guess, is, is what's on my hand. We'll just label it as that. Um, sorry, I, I should have scrubbed a little harder. Um, let's see. <clears throat> oh, Aaron's got a great off-topic question. Since it's a three-day weekend, would this be a good time for an Apple tablet or wait for a little later? So Aaron, I really didn't see any huge Apple sales this week at all. Um, I would honestly wait in terms of uh, like iPads and iPad minis. We see huge sales on those always around back to school. Um, so that's really the sale that I would be waiting for. Apple just doesn't, they don't do much for three day weekends the way that PCs do because they don't have really any competition in their boat. Um, but I would wait for back to school if you can hold off on it. Um, it's funny uh, that all of you guys are, I, I will have to really start to focus on, you know, making sure my, my hands are completely clean. Um, didn't really think about that at all. Um, okay, so Jennifer's saying, you know, if I start couponing this week, what are the best things to start stocking up on and getting six weeks worth? I wish I would have known years ago. Um, okay, so what I would focus on, Jennifer, honestly, uh, if you're just getting started, pick one store. Just pick the store that's closest to you. So if you're on Southern Savers, um, all the stores are at the top of the site on Southern Savers and pick the store that's closest to you and look at the list. Everything that is on the list on Southern Savers is a good price this week. So I don't type the entire Publix ad or the entire buy low ad. I only type the items that are 40% off or more. So use that list and then focus on trying to get six weeks worth of items that you can. If you're just getting started, you don't have as many coupons. That's the hard part when you're getting started. So get what you can, and then remember, coupon or no coupon, it's still a really good price today. So let's go ahead and grab it, coupon or no coupon, and then six weeks from now, when it comes back on sale, hopefully I'm gonna have more coupons. Um, so don't let the coupons hold you back as you get started. Focus on the sales as you get started. Because really, guys, that's the bulk of our savings. You know, to go back to this guy, it's BOGO at buy low. I'm saving 50% to buy this today. Yes, I have a dollar off two coupon. That's saving me another 50 cents off a box. But $2, $2.50 of my savings was the sale. So don't let not having enough coupons hold you back from stocking up as you get started. So grab what's on sale just from whatever store you pick um, that is on sale this week. Not necessarily looking at, you know, I'm going to stock up on key items, but more remembering that if this is my favorite cereal and I don't grab it now, it's going to be six more weeks until it's on sale. So coupon or no coupon, I would want to grab it now if this was my favorite cereal. Um, and I can't say that I've ever even even eaten it, but one of my children loves it because it's my father-in-law's favorite cereal. So he got them hooked um, when they, I think, were at the beach with him one time. Um, but hopefully that helps in terms of getting started. 
Um, do I always make uh, multiple meals for several days? So Shanna, I will cook extra, um, which for a family of seven can be hard to do sometimes, but we will always do enough to have some leftovers because that becomes lunch. Um, so you know to hold this back up again, and I said I don't really plan for lunches ever. I plan for a Sunday lunch, and that's about it. Um, but it's pretty rare for me to plan lunches. My kid's favorite question is, what should I eat for lunch? Because we homeschool, so we're here all the time. Um, but generally, lunch is leftovers from here. And we do a lot of casseroles, pot pies, and whatnot because it can feed much more than just this meal. And you can eat on it for a few days, like soup night. I love soup night because a big, huge pot of soup is going to last us uh, a couple meals. A big pot of chili is going to last for a while. Um, so anytime that we can do that, anytime we make way too much, which we have done with chili, I will automatically go ahead and freeze half of what was extra. Because if I end up putting it in the fridge and hoping people eat it and they don't, it really hurts to throw that away in the end. So half of whatever's left just automatically gets frozen and the other half gets put in the fridge for leftovers. Anytime you can do that and you've just got a massive amount, save yourself the sadness of throwing it away in the end uh, and just go ahead and get it in the freezer. Um, let's see. So when will butter go on sale? So Aaron, butter is a baking item and it hurts to say that because we go through a lot of butter around here. Um, but butter is definitely a baking item. We saw really great prices on it um, around Christmas. But Easter's coming. We're almost there. So we're going to start to see the Easter baking deals um, probably the first full week in March. So it makes me pull up a calendar um, to give you some dates. So I would start to look for Easter baking items that add starting March 7th. And some really good butter deals are gonna will run um, through a chunk of March because Easter is April 1st, guys. So You've got to not have an April mindset with Easter. You got to have a uh, you got to have a March mindset with Easter and Easter sales. So I would start stocking up on all of your flour, all of your sugar, butter, any of those items. Come that first full week out of, of March, and then the next three that follow. Um, and Jonathan's chiming in too that Kroger did have butter for a dollar ninety nine last week. So um, I would wait if you don't you don't have a Kroger, Aaron. Um, you know, if you've got Publix, Bilo, all of those, they'll start very, very soon in all of uh, their butter and, and other baking sales. Um, when's a good time to buy print toner? Is it the same as the computer sales? So, Teresa, we usually um, will find print toner on sale all the time, really cheap. Um, there's two packs that are 10 bucks on Amazon a lot. Um, that's where I would go. Always off-brand, though. Never, never name brand um, would be my my huge way of putting it. Um, so Miss Jay's looking for a slow cooker. Miss Jay, I would head tonight, if you can, to Kohl's.com and check out what they have. Kohl's has been running 30% off coupon codes and they have a 10 off 50 in any home, which qualifies for the housewares and the, the slow cooker. Um, so see what you can piece together with that. Um, paired in i um, trying to think of anybody else had really good coupons. Macy's is also running a lot of good President's Day sales, but all those in tonight. So don't wait. No pressure, but don't wait. Um, that Kohl's 30% ends tonight. The Kohl's 10 off 50 on homeware also ends tonight. So don't wait. Um, let's see. Oh, um, Margaret, it is totally off topic. Uh, uh, in your second year of homeschooling and stressed about sending them back to public school, um, we could do a Facebook Live on that. Um, it's it's one that not a lot of folks would probably be interested in in the end because um, there's such a select group of us. But um, we have been homeschooling for, I stopped and counted the other day. Um, I have seventh graders, so seven years. Uh, and it, it originally was not my passion. My husband was homeschooled actually the whole way through and still went to Georgia Tech. So, um, you know, it can happen. And that was his passion for us to do. Uh, but it is something where now I can't imagine sending them away anymore. I love having all of us here all the time. Um, were there any today only president online deals that I would that I would recommend? So Dennis, uh, that is a great question. I actually did a really big roundup of just all the President's Day sales that we saw. Uh, and it was kind of a long roundup. But the Kohl's is definitely the one that would take the cake. 
for me because all those coupon codes end tonight, um, and that was the 30% off and the 10 doll, the 10 off 50 and, and a couple of others. Um, the other ones, um, I'm pulling up the list just so that I can make sure I don't miss any specifically. Um, the other big ones, uh, the Macy's had a lot of things super cheap, um, especially the dishes. Someone emailed me um, that the dishes were back on sale yesterday, which was fun to have someone share. Um, Shutterfly's got four free photo gifts. Old Navy has 35% off your entire purchase. Um, there's, a t there's a lot of them. Body Shop uh, may not be a fun one for you, Dennis, but the Body Shop um, is running 40% off and free shipping today only, which was pretty sweet. Um, so go crazy on little travel sizes. They're perfect for like teacher back to um, thank you gifts and back to school gifts, you know, just stick them in your gift closet. Um, all of those. My other favorite, there's a lot of photo deals right now for President's Day sale, but Walgreens takes the cake. So if you didn't see uh, the Walgreens um, photo boards, so they're like a photo canvas, but they're on a piece of wood and the eight by tens are five bucks. And then you can pick them up at any local store. A five by seven was four twenty five, so I would really just go with the eight by ten for four ninety nine, uh, and then just pick up at your local Walgreens. So that was one of them too. So I'll stick um, this in the comments, but that Walgreens link and all of those is in this roundup, um, so that you can see kind of all of the top President's Day deals that we we put in. Um, let's see. I think I'm I'm trying to um, keep up with everybody's questions. I think we're almost there. Um, oh, <laughs> if butter and cheese goes on sale, why doesn't milk? Um, so Emily, there are some items that I think the grocery world views as like, these are your classic, you have to get this, and we know you're always going to be in the door for this. Uh, we don't see milk on sale, but we do have milk wars. That's what I call them. Uh, and the goal is for the grocery store to have the lowest price and then they sit on it. Um, so for example, buy low in our city anyway, I'm hoping they did this everywhere for everybody else, but milk was $3.25 up until a month ago. And now milk is $1.95 in every single buy low in our city. That's a massive jump. That's not a sale. That's just, they changed their price because realizing that someone else has the lower price on milk is enough to get people in the door. I can't tell you how many people have told me, yes, but the price at Aldi is such and such. You know what? If I go to Aldi, I can't get everything we need. They don't sell all the items that I need for a normal week. And I don't want to make multiple trips just to get a lower price on milk. So to see a grocery store take a big jump like that, that's what they're trying to do. It's milk wars. Uh, we see the same thing around the holidays. So we see ham wars and turkey wars uh, because the goal is to have the lowest price on those essential items. And milk is just in that essential category. So not a lot of sales there. You will see great sales on soy milk if you're ever in that category and uh, the almond milk and all of those. We've you know, seen that so delicious, got down to 50 cents a bottle at Kroger a few weeks ago. Uh, it's on sale at Target this week, but not regular milk. Um, let's see. Uh, do I think that Dell would be out of the refurbished deals, not able to see them? So Beth, they can, I can't imagine that they sold out of everything. Um, so dellrefurbished.com is the site that, um, I always recommend and they are running 40% off through today. Uh, what I would do is go straight to laptops, um, and then you can sort by price. No, they still have a lot on their site. So um, what I would look for, uh, you're, they've got the 40% um, off. The cheapest one I see, if you click on laptops, is 239 And then 40% off of 239 is still, it's going to be, it's like super fast math here. But it's like 140 bucks for a Dell laptop using that coupon code. Um, and then you can sort by what you're looking for. But I am seeing just in laptops over 500 laptops. So go to dellrefurbished.com and then at the top, click on laptops or click on de desktops and then use that coupon code. And the coupon code's in the roundups um, of the 30 President Day deals that we just put in the comments too. So if you're looking for the code to use, because I don't want to tell it to you and then be wrong. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Do we ever see good deals on replacement brush heads for rechargeable toothbrushes? Lynn, not a ton, but I would watch CVS. 
Uh, CVS and Walgreens will both run extra care buck deals and they'll include all Oral-B in those deals. So whenever you see a buy $30 worth of Oral-B and get $10 in extra care bucks back, those brush heads are going to be included. And then you can use a coupon on them because they do give us pretty good coupons on the replacement brush heads. So that's the item, that's the sale that I would be watching for specifically is a drugstore extra care buck that includes just all Oral-B because they're always included. Um, and yes, CVS, Diana is chiming in right below you that CVS does put milk on sale sometimes, so they do. And depending on your area, CVS will also run an extra care buck on milk. Not in all areas, that one's regional, but I know the Atlanta market they do on a regular basis. Um, so if you're in a big city, never hurts to see if that one's running in your area on the regional milk deals uh, for extra care bucks. Um, Let's see. Oh, and uh, Travon says Walmart and Aldi are currently fighting at 98 cents. Um, so they're definitely winning uh, that milk war for sure. Okay, and I love seeing that lots of you guys um, would like more info on the homeschooling. So we can do just kind of even a separate Q&A kind of on a different night if y'all wanted to, just so that the folks who have no desire uh, don't feel like they lost their couponing Q&A night. Um, but we, we can totally go that route. Um, let's see. And yes, Jonathan said today there's a deal, um, uh, there is a deal on a, Be on the printer at Best Buy, um, that I put in a deal on Best Buy printers that is the laser printer. Um, so if you're wanting a laser printer, there is one, it's in the 30 President's Day deals, um, link that we, we stuck in the comments, um. Best Buy also has a Brother printer that is super cheap today, guys, but hold off. Don't get super excited because when you see a really, really cheap printer, the first thing that you should be looking for is whether or not it is an inkjet or a laser. And so the really, really cheap printer, which is like 39 bucks, it is a Brother, it's an inkjet. And that's not what we want because it's going to cost you an arm and a leg to keep ink in it. So go with the laser printer. It's the second deal on the 30 deals today. Um, but that laser printer, they have a one that prints, scans, uh, and copies is 99 bucks shipped, uh, which isn't a bad price at all for a multifunction printer. Uh, Lynn asked, do we have a Sam's or a Costco membership? We have a Costco membership right now, Lynn. Uh, and I kind of did it so that I could scope out deals so that we could grab a few things. I don't know that it saved us any massive amounts of money because we really don't use it very often. I've been in maybe three times um, since we bought the membership. In the end, most of the items that we get are always cheaper in a grocery store on sale with a coupon than they would ever be um, in the warehouse club. So I don't know that you'll save enough to pay for a membership in a warehouse club unless you're buying a lot of other deals. Um, but for most people, uh, when you're trying to ponder warehouse clubs, most people think like, what, what about paper goods? You know, if I could get the biggest package of paper towels, then we would finally save money. But really, our best deals on paper goods are in the drugstores um, with rewards coming back and coupons. So that's really the route that I would try to point folks is to learn how to drugstore shop um, because it will always be cheaper than uh, the warehouse clubs in the end. Um, let's see. Trying to catch up everywhere else. Um, yeah, so Raquel asks, any tips for couponers that wanting to start to extreme couponing for donating and just for helping? So if that's your boat, and we've, we've talked a little bit about hoarding and not overstocking, but you're saying, no, no, I want to buy, I want to buy and donate. Um, even there, some tips that I would give you before we even go into, you know, the concept of it all is still be sweet to the people around you. Because while some folks are couponing to donate, and that's great, um, Remember that there are just some moms out there that we just want one. We just want to feed our family this week, and we need to feed our family on a budget. And so when you clear a shelf, you're making it where someone else can't. And yes, I could get a rain check, and yes, I could kind of still get the same deal, but in the end, you're kind of hurting uh, folks too. You're, you're turning them off and making them not even try. So please, if you are couponing to donate, don't ever clear a shelf um, you know, take some, but leave some for other people. But the best thing you could do for your store and for other shoppers is to actually tell your store what you want ahead of time. So we put out the public ad two days before the public ad comes out. So go to your store, use that list from Southern Savers and go to your store and say, hey, 
I want to get 20 of these. Your store can actually order you your own amount. Um, and it will come in on a midweek truck and you come in and pick it up. So your 40 bottles of mustard never even hit the shelf. And you know what? Your store would love to do that for you because when they have to write a rain check, they lose money. And a lot of folks don't realize that. But a BOGO deal for Publix and Bilo and Winn-Dixie, they do not lose any money on a BOGO deal. It's actually paid for by the brand as long as they sell it this week. But if they write a rain check for it, they lose money on the rain check. So they get a rebate back from the manufacturer on the amount sold this week in the store. But outside of this week, when they honor that rain check in two weeks, it's not part of their rebate. So they just lost money. So they would be glad to order you as many as you want to come in on that midweek truck because then they sold more and they're gonna get, their numbers are up. They're going to get a bigger rebate back in the end, um, but they do not want to have to write 40 mamas rain checks because somebody took all of the bottles that they had. So if you see things that you want to buy to donate, well, that's the first thing I would do is that you start to get in a mindset. If I'm going to shop to, to, to do some serious donations, that I get in the mindset of looking at that ad early, making a list of what I, you know what, I've got a ton of these coupons. I'm going to go huge on this. I make a list of those items and I just go straight to the store, straight to customer service, and I get to know them. And I say, you know what, I would like to just pre-order some of these items. Uh, and as long as they can do it, and there will be some times that they say, you know what, we can't control that one or the warehouse won't allow us to get any more. There are going to be moments, but as long as they know ahead of time, most of the time they will gladly order you as much as you want. And that way, when you've done it too, they love you as well. Because sometimes you are going to run into a store that's going to say, well, there's a limit. You can't have any more. Um, and this way, it's not going to happen if you've pre-told them what you plan on stocking up on. It's going to make everybody so much happier in the end. Um, the other thing you're going to want to be able to do that is a lot more coupons. Uh, keep in mind, even there, you're still going to be limited on the printables. So you're really going to be looking at insert coupons um, to be able to buy that much in bulk uh, and to have the extra savings. So you're probably going to be looking at getting a lot of extra inserts or seeing if folks can donate inserts to you. Um, but those would be my quick, I guess, tips for being able to do that. The rest of us, we're just going to focus on getting enough for six weeks, guys. So buying when it's on sale, buying enough of it to last you until it's back on sale. That's our only goal, just six weeks. Uh, and for a lot of things, it's really not a lot. So don't panic on that six week mark. You know, how many times are you going to uh, eat tacos in the next six weeks? And how many times are you going to have uh, pizza night? We're not needing one every single week for the next six weeks. You probably, most of us rotate between 10 meals, I would say. So you're probably looking at eating something every other week, probably looking at three, two to three of most items. So don't panic on the six week mark. It's really, really not a lot. Um, so Dennis is asking uh, info on the plenty points, the three times and the five times. So Dennis, I'm assuming that you're referring to the promotion that Bilo is running right now, where when you um, buy certain totals of groceries, it's at the bottom of the Bilo ad, um, and you, I'll pull it up because I won't remember uh, specifics on it, but that they will print out a coupon. The coupon's on your receipt. Oh, there we go. So uh, your first $40 purchase, you get a three times your plenty point coupon on the bottom of your receipt. Your um, second $40 purchase, you get a five time coupon. That coupon you're going to need to scan the next time that you grocery shop and then you will earn that many points off of what you purchased, off your total purchase. So keep in mind that um, that's a really tiny amount off your total purchase. Um, is the normal amount that we earn in plenty points. Now the 10 time one is pretty awesome. So three $40 purchases in February and you're gonna get a coupon for 10 times the plenty points. Um, that's what that promotion is. Um, and it's printing on your receipt in Bilo. So you're gonna have to hold on to the bottom of your receipt, Dennis, so that you can then scan it the next time you come in as you're checking out. Um, so Heather asks, where is the best place to get coupons online subscriptions are sometimes really expensive or newspapers. So Heather, you really only have a few options. You can get it locally. Um, usually in terms of getting it locally, the subscription's always the best way to do that uh, versus buying it individually every single week. The subscription's usually cheaper than individually buying. Um, 
Ordering online, what I would recommend to get that cost lower is that you split it with a friend. So ordering online, if we went, let's say, for example, I go through SundayCouponInserts.com and they have a 10 count pack. I don't need 10. I do the four and the four is plenty for me. But if I did get the 10 and I had a friend that was down the street doing this, we could split that and we basically just split shipping in half. It just got a lot cheaper to do that. Um, so that's where if you're looking at the online subscriptions, I would see is there somebody near me that I could split this with because it's really it's going to bring the cost down so much less um, than what it feels like it's going to be. That's where I would point you to if you can go that route. Um, OK, let me jump back in. Um, oh, and then, Wendy, are chicken wings going on sale? Um, you know what? I can use the item search and we'll see what we can find. Um, a little inside tip for you because we start all the ads early um, so you can put in a future date and you will be able to see what's coming on sale as well um, it doesn't look like we have anything typed in for this coming ad um, that starts on um, the 21st yet um, but hopefully we can find something for you soon uh, I would be looking in uh, the realm of 79 cents a pound for chicken wings. Um, that's usually the best sale price that we see. It's not something I usually buy very often because um, it takes a lot of them to make my children full. So we're just going to stick with breasts. Um, we do have frozen chicken wings at Bilo and Winn-Dixie that are BOGO right now though. If you've got a Bilo or a Winn-Dixie nearby and that's an ongoing sale. So it's a uh, do the math on that. It's a f uh, three, almost three and a half pound bag is $6.49. So it's not really coming out to a crazy good price for the wings. Um, but that's all we got right now. It's just the frozen and Bilo. Okay. Um, I think that I've caught everyone's questions. <laughs> uh, and Dennis, I'm glad, I'm glad I could go into overtime for you, answer everybody's questions. I don't like to leave anybody hanging. Um, Yes, so Marla, is there a list of what you should be paying? There is a list, Marla, and we'll stick it in the comments too. Um, I will grab the link to that right now. But there is a buy price list, uh, and this buy price list is one, um, let's see, um, that will give you an idea of just general good prices of what we're aiming for for items in the store. So that's the concept. It's also, Marla, what you can make using the, uh, the item search on Southern Savers and putting in that, that date in the past. So if you have something that you absolutely love um, to buy, then use the item search to help you spot that. Um, but yes, so the one, and I, I was trying to search quickly, so the one I just found is old, um, but I will have my husband stick this one in first, and then I'll keep digging um, to find a... Uh, the newer version of the buy price list. Um, but sometimes it's a little harder for me to search for and talk at the same time. Um, with buy price lists, keep in mind that there's no brands on that buy price list. Uh, and when I say it's old, not a ton's changed on the list um, between uh, this list and what current prices are. I would say produce has probably gone up just a tad. Um, but not much, you know, even down to our canned beans or 50 cents a can, we still see that. Keep in mind when you look at this list, um, you will see cheaper. So we've gotten free beans. This is really our, if we see it, it is a good price. And then if I see it even lower, let's totally stock up on these items too. Uh, and then I just mentioned there's no brands here because we see all the brands hit the same price. So for me, I don't want to pay more than a dollar for a box of cereal and it really doesn't matter the brand. So they're all gonna kind of hit about the same price. Uh, Roberta Harris Teeter, yes, Harris Teeter Super Doubles. We've got a ton of rumors going. I've actually already started a list. Uh, it is gonna start Sunday, March 4th and run through Tuesday, March 6th. So you've got a week and a half um, until it's gonna happen, but it is definitely coming up very, very soon. Uh, and I should have, that first list up by the middle of next week is my goal. I'm trying to get it done early because um, I am going to a conference the end of next week. So I, I got to be on this. We got to make sure we have it done before we go out of town or you guys uh, would be very sad. 
Um, so I'll keep digging and trying to make sure I can get the updated buy price list for you guys. But I wanted you to see what one looked like while we were live. Um, sometimes it's just hard when you got a lot of posts. Uh, you've been around too long. Uh, can take a little bit of time to find things. So, um, well, I'm going to go ahead and pop out and I'll stick in the comment um, for the new buy price list here in a minute. I hope you guys have a great night and I'll jump in with any deals that we find throughout the week and jump in and share our shopping uh, on Wednesday as well. So we're back in the grocery stores this week uh, and everything that we grab. So I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, feel free to send me a message with any other coupons that, or any other coupons, any other questions that you have, uh, Facebook message or an email. I'm always happy to answer any of those. So Jenny at southernsavers.com is my email. Um, Y'all take care and make sure that you're you know, sharing with folks how to get started and sharing with folks how to save money because once you figure it out, it's definitely not something to hold to yourself. Um, have a great night.